So Edwin, also known as a water guy, what inspired you to start Give Me Tap? Well, a few things. So I guess in 2009, I was coming to a point when I was 24, I was going to turn 25. For me, turning 25 has always been a big thing for me. Since I was like about eight years old, I was like, when I'm 25, that's when my life's going to kick in. And I was always trying to get into the best shape of my life. So I decided when I was 24 that I'm going to exercise a lot and get that six pack that I've never had before. So the motivation was really to exercise. And that meant I was just drinking four or five litres of water a day. And just being around campus at the University of Manchester, I was just getting caught out one or two many times, having to go to a shop, they would refuse me water, and I just had to go and buy a bottle of water. And that just kept on building up. And I was like, this is frustrating. Why won't someone just give me free access to water? And plus we have some of the best water in the world. Why do I need to drink it in a bottle? So, and sort of seeing that and then looking around the world and the people who don't have anywhere near access, good quality access to water as we do, it sort of compelled me to try and come up with a solution. I hear you have a PhD in mathematics and you could have easily got a job in an investment bank, but you decided to let all of that go and just concentrate on Give Me Tap, which is a good thing because if you have a company, you have to put 100% into it, yeah. into what you believe in. So what is it that enables you to keep going forward with your vision? Um, for me, I guess the main motivation is once I had this, this passion for working at Give Me Tap, and that was cemented really when I went to Namibia last year in 2010, November and to actually see the direct impact. So I started giving tap, been working there for eight months, then to fly out to Namibia, to drill boreholes, to plant vegetation, uh, to irrigate the land, to build a community center, to build a football pitch as well, because we had a bit of spare time and to play football with the children, to see the joy that they had just by having something that I kind of take for granted in some sense, because we have it here so clean and free. That just gave me a different sort of motivation. I came back here ready to work harder than I ever have. And you know, I never really see it as a sacrifice. I think it's just what I want to do. You know, I want to have a business that matters. And part of doing that is to generate revenue to then do social good. And I think that's the core essence of what we're doing at Give Me Tap. It's the core principles to try and make water easily accessible for every human being in the world. So we never really view it as we're sacrificing so much profit. It's, it's the heart of why we exist. We exist to do this. Okay, how many liters of water did you drink today? I probably drink about three litres of water to four litres of water a day. And I guess I try and always add that, you know, the government or people recommend you how much you should drink every single day. And I think it's important for people to realise they need to go and find out specifically what they need to drink. And so for me, I, I weigh 16 stones and I need to make sure I drink the recommended amount for that body weight as opposed to a recommended daily amount. And I think it's the same things with calories and count. I think everyone should really look specifically at what they need to drink for their own water content. But I drink about three to four litres every single day. Right. I have the Give Me Tap bottle here in front of me with tap water probably filtered from the tanks. Now convince me, is it really safe for me to drink and how is it good for me? I think the, the question about, you know, how's tap water good for you? I think all water is good for you. It's the purest form. Your body's made up of 60, 70% of water. Um, is how you function. Now, tap water is very highly regulated, especially here in the UK. And you have all the big utility companies, your Thames Water United Utilities, who check these things hundreds of times every single year. And it's a very regulated industry. They wouldn't give it to you if it wasn't safe. You recently attended the Thames Festival, so tell me more about it and how were you raising awareness for Give Me Tap? So the Thames Festival was an amazing festival. I've never actually been to Thames Festival ever before. So this was a, an amazing exhibition to go and be at and just amazing to see what Thames Festival is about. Um, we were positioned in an amazing place where we were in this place called The Scoop. And so we, on one of the days, which is on a Sunday, we got to see a choir and the choir was singing for water. So literally everyone there was trying to raise funds for water projects and water charities. We all know that starting a business is not a smooth process. So what challenges have you faced and how were you able to achieve your objectives? Are there lessons which other people can learn from? I think I had an advantage when I first initially started Give Me Tap in the fact that I was part of my entrepreneur society at university. Um, I read an endless amounts of biographies and business books because I've always sort of been interested in that space. And during my university years, I had free time. So I actually started two organizations prior to Give Me Tap. And that just gave me loads of experience on writing quick business cases, business plans, looking at projections, and also just executing. I think that's one of the biggest things. One of my previous businesses always used to talk about the importance of thinking, planning, and action. It was called Think, Plan, Action was our slogan. And so when I started Give Me Tap, I was very, very aware of not focusing so much on 
business planning, like writing a 30, 40 page business document. I was very keen on having a quick idea and trying to execute as quick as possible to just get feedback from the world. Because as a concept, Give Me Tap was relatively new, so I, I couldn't go to market research to see would people like what I was trying to do. I just had to sort of get out there. And so I'd say to a lot of people, if you're going to be disruptive, you're going to do something new, just go to the market and they'll tell you, or the customers will tell you if your idea is good or not. So I think it's about moving quickly, moving fast. Um, you know, think big, move fast. That's one of the things I would say to, to entrepreneurs. And I always think do something that matters. What kind of attributes do you think one should possess to be an entrepreneur? I don't know if there's any like clean cut sort of traits because um, I don't really proclaim myself to be an entrepreneur. I think for me, I love solving problems and that's why I did maths, that's why I did a PhD in maths, it allows me to creatively problem solve. So I think if you, if you have that, maybe you'll look in the world in a different way and by looking around the world you'll see problems that you can solve every day and I think if you solve real life problems then you can create an organisation that will help more people solve that same problem for themselves. So, I think if you just become, if you're just problems or problem or your solution orientated, you'll have more fortune becoming maybe an entrepreneur if that's what you want to do. Where do you see Give Me Tap in two to three years' time? The next 14 months, we've got a sort of a clear, definitive plan on the Olympics, so that's going to be coming soon. About 14 months, maybe it's like a year now, less than a year. Wow, people are going to be here. 10.8 million spectators are going to be in the UK, and during the sort of summer periods a lot of them could want to be drinking water. And so we're going to try and help people have a, a genuine alternative um, to bottled beverages so that there is essentially a sustainable way for them to stay hydrated. So you know, when you're going on the tube, you know, they've always got signs saying, you know, stay hydrated, you know, at least before you go into a tube, you can take your gimme-tap bottle, get a quick refill, and go underground knowing that you're going to stay hydrated. And the same when you're at the Olympic Park. That's what we're trying to do to be sustainable so we're not going to have millions of plastic bottles littering London and all the other cities that the Olympics is actually going to be hosted at.